Hey there, this is Tom with MightyInvestor.com and today we're going to talk about your money or your life. Uh, this is one of the five key books that I've written about on MightyInvestor.com uh, that I used to reach financial independence at about 40, 41 years old. I've written book reviews and now we're going ahead with the video reviews as well. And actually, if I was to pick one book that you would read uh, that would get you on the path to financial independence, it's this one. Uh, the authors are Vicki Robin and Joe Dominguez. I read this book uh, t about 20 years ago and it radically changed how I related to money. Um, real quickly, by way of background, Joe Dominguez uh, grew up, um, I believe he was a New Yorker, and he became a Wall Street analyst uh, when he was a very young guy and he was just super frugal and super smart about how he invested and he actually retired in 1968 at the age of 31 and then lived off of bond income for the rest of his life. Um, this book is very uh, broad in terms of all the things that it talks about and it's really hard for me to summarize all the great ideas but I'm going to give you a few of the key concepts that I used and loved and implemented in my own life. Um, the first one is you have to track and figure out exactly what your life energy is worth in terms of how much money you're making uh, from your work. And so the way you do this is you figure out, okay, what is my basic hourly income? Let's say it's $20 an hour. Mine was roughly that when I did this many years ago. And then you subtract out taxes because you don't actually take that away. And then you start doing a bunch of extra calculations that helps you figure out what your true income is. And the first thing you do is you figure out, for example, okay, say let's, let's say you're, you work officially, you're really there about 45 hours a week. Well, how much time are you spending commuting to and from work? For me, that was roughly an hour a day total, half hour each way. Then it's quite creative. How much time are you spending getting sick because you're getting burnout from your job? Like how many weekends? Uh, a year? Are you just in recovery mode? All of that kind of stuff. Like how many mental health days are you taking? You add all of that in and then you divide your after-tax salary by that. But there's more. You also figure out, well, how much money am I spending on different clothes that I wouldn't buy were I not employed? What other things am I spending money on that I otherwise wouldn't have to? Maintenance of car or whatever, gas, things like that. When I did this, I discovered that my true income was a little less than $10 an hour. And the next thing that uh, Joe and Robin do with this is they have you convert that into, for example, you know, how much is a dollar worth in terms of minutes of your life energy? And this gets you to think very differently when you start spending money on something. You know, one of the videos I've made talks about buying used cars and saving you know, $20,000 or more right off the bat. When you start thinking in terms of your life, energy, and money, you start thinking, wow, I can buy a used car, have basically the exact same lifestyle, and how many hours, weeks, months, years, whatever it might be, have I just saved myself by being smart about how I spend my money? So you figure this out, that's your life energy calculation. And then there's a couple more calculations they have you make. Um, one is you just track your expenses very religiously. And I did this for about a year. I would write it all down and I would categorize it and I would tabulate it. Now that's much easier with uh, software applications like mint.com, which is free. Um, and you're really getting a much more granular uh, sense of what you're spending your money on. Frankly, even with mint, if I were you uh, starting off, I would suggest that you manually tabulate this stuff because it'll it'll make it more concrete. Okay, the next thing is you really take stock of your total assets. And that means you add up how much cash do you have, what do you have in the bank, um, what do you have in the value of your like bicycles, cars, real estate, anything. And it actually doesn't take that long to do. And for me, this was quite profound. It gave me a much better and clearer and more granular sense of what was my financial position. Um, and I was able to then, you know, get a sense of, okay, well, am I close to retirement? Not at that time, I wasn't at all. Okay, the third thing, or excuse me, the fourth thing, and this was what I found to be the absolute magic in the book, is you start charting. And I'm actually going to show you the chart that I made. We won't spend too much time on it because I don't think you'll be able to make it out. But again, this is, you know, 
back. I would suggest you still do this manually. You get this really cool chart paper and you start charting your income, your expenses, and um, your passive income. You know, I'm not going to really try to show this in detail, but you know, the bottom axis is time and the vertical axis is uh, dollars. Okay, we're going to put that down for now because I think it will be too much of a distraction otherwise. And then I'm not going to draw on the wall here, but we'll do a hypothetical uh, whiteboard here. What you would be doing is, okay, so you've got your dollars here, you've got your time here, and you would be tracking your income along here, and hopefully that's trending upwards over time. And then down here, you would be tracking your expenses, and as you start to implement the program, these drop. And then finally, at the bottom, for most of us, when we start out as investors, you have your passive income. And this is going to slowly start going up as you get stocks that pay dividends, or as you get bonds that pay um, an income, etc. And the magic of this whole program, and what just blew my mind when I read it, was what they call the crossover point. And that is the moment when your passive income, which is slowly going up over the years, crosses through your expenses, which are usually, they usually drop and then flatten out as you get those under control. So you've got these flat, and then you've got your passive income going up, and you hit this point, it's called the crossover point, and that's the magic moment when work becomes optional. Now, what they suggest in the book and what I did in real life and what I suggest anyone does is you don't want to quit your job or do whatever it is that's uh, bringing in your income and allowing you to purchase assets. You don't want to quit right when you hit the crossover point because that's a very vulnerable, you would feel quite stressed if inflation kicked in or if you had medical expenses or any, anything unexpected, you would have problems. So um, what you do is you keep working until your passive income is quite a bit or at least notably above your uh, monthly expenses and then you're gold and then work becomes optional. As anybody who reads MightyInvestor.com regularly knows, I'm not a big fan of just uh, stopping working. I don't think most people are happy unless they have a sense of being productive, etc. You can look at other my other video on that um, that specifically talks about early retirement and why I think it could be a bit of a mistake. Um, but Your Money or Your Life is a an awesome book. Um, if I had to recommend one book, I would recommend it. Now, there's a couple things that we probably have to tweak it for now um, in the modern era. When this book was published in the early 1990s, 92, um, U.S. government bonds were still yielding uh, high single digits, probably eight or nine percent, roughly, if, I, if I've got my memory right. And now, unfortunately, those yields have gone down dramatically, well under half of that, at least as of the recording of this video in 2017. And so, as the authors write in the updated uh, version of the book, which is now um, Vicki Robin, who's really pushing it because, unfortunately, Mr. Dominguez passed away, um, they talk about uh, incorporating stocks and index investing into this. Now, of course, the chart that you make would look a little bit different because if you're owning index funds, the income that you're getting from those is, at the time of this recording, roughly 2%. Now, you would have to have, for most people, well north of a million dollars um, to get a yield just off of those stocks that would cover your expenses. So what most of us have done, I think, in the modern world is we're incorporating just owning stocks as an asset and yes, living off the income, but also counting on a degree of capital gains um, to cover those expenses over time. Personally, I'm kind of right at, at the break even between some um, small businesses that I, one small business in particular that I own um, that's providing an income and then the income from my assets. I actually don't really like counting on capital gains, but I do think it's a realistic approach in the modern era, and that's what most people are going to consider doing. So that's uh, Your Money or Your Life, uh, short and sweet. Um, it's a fantastic book. It's one of the two core books that I think if you read just two, I would suggest. And that is, again, Your Money or Your Life. And the other one is A Random Walk Down Wall Street. And we will have a video up on that uh, very soon as well. Um, I suggest you get this and read it and really, really do the program it will shift your thinking. Uh, it's very fun, it's very exciting, um, and it is very much embracing radical frugality 
And that's really up to you whether or not you want to go that route or not. Um, that's very much a personal decision based on the lifestyle you want, how long you want to work, if you want to keep working forever. Um, but in any case, I definitely don't think you'll regret it. It's very easy to read. It's very reader friendly. It doesn't assume that you have huge education in economics or anything like that. And um, if you've already read it, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Um, and if you do go out and get it, um, circle back and let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, so again, I want to thank you very much uh, for your attention. We really do appreciate it. My name is Tom and I'm with MightyInvestor.com and we will see you soon for another video. Thank you and goodbye. Ciao.